Hello, I'm Uva Brandis, Faculty Director of the Urban and Regional Planning Program, and welcome to today's In Focus video, New Mobility in Metro DC. I'm joined by a member of our faculty, Ken Joe, and he has just finished overseeing the completion of a regional travel survey for the Metro DC region. This is a once in a decade regional mobility analysis that covers all modes and areas of the metro region. Welcome, Ken. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Ken, um, I'd like to just start off, well, I'd like to start congratulating you um, for having completed the survey. And, and please let us know, what was the process of getting the survey done? Sure. Um, so um, just, you know, the regional travel survey is a household travel survey for the Washington region. And so it's conducted about once every 10 years. Uh, you could think of it like a transportation census. Uh, so it provides insights on regional travel patterns and how these patterns have changed over time. And so households were randomly selected to participate in the survey by mail and then completed the survey online. And so there are two parts of the survey. There was a recruitment survey, which included questions about demographics and typical weekday travel and a one day travel diary in which households reported all trips that were taken on a randomly assigned weekday. So we collected detailed travel information for about 16,000 households in the region. So this is the largest travel survey that we have ever conducted. And so the survey provides the most comprehensive picture of regional travel patterns for both work and non-work trips in the Washington region. And so we use the survey data for developing our regional travel demand forecast and it helps to inform local and regional transportation planning decisions. That's great. And Ken, as, as we know, uh, travel patterns have been changing for some time. What are the key findings of this, of, of, of this survey? Yeah, there, there are several interesting findings uh, from this survey, and I recently gave a briefing to our Transportation Planning Board highlighting key travel trends from the Regional Travel Survey, comparing changes since our last household travel survey in 2007-2008. I think the most notable finding is that bicycle trips have dramatically increased across the Washington region, which is exciting. The share of bike trips have doubled region-wide, uh, since 2007, 2008, it has increased threefold in our regional core. So our region has he invested heavily in bike infrastructure over the past decade. We've retrofitted streets with bike lanes, connected multi-use trails, but also launched capital bike share. Uh, so these investments appear to have paid off in terms of promoting more bicycling in the region. The survey results also showed that the share of all trips by rail transit has declined since 2007, 2008. And so the drop in rail transit suggests that some people are shifting towards other travel modes, such as Uber and Lyft, in addition to bicycling. However, the good news in terms of sustainable mobility is that the share of workers commuting by car has significantly decreased in the region as more commuters are taking the bus, they're walking, biking, using taxi and ride hail. So I think this reflects changes in land use and development patterns together with increased investments in transit, walk, and bike infrastructure. And finally, the survey found that households in the region were taking fewer trips overall compared with 2007, 2008, which reflects a nationwide trend in declining trip rates. So the rise in online shopping and smartphone app-based delivery services replacing trips to stores and restaurants partially explains this trend. So even before the COVID-19 pandemic, people are already becoming more accustomed to having food and goods delivered to their homes. That's really interesting, Ken. Um, I'm wondering if you could reflect a little bit on what we learned from the survey in the context of longer term trends in the region, and if you could reflect a little bit on this most amazing year that we're living through uh, that has totally changed travel behavior as a result of the pandemic. Yeah, this is an excellent question, and it's worth mentioning that it is challenging 
and to forecast long-term travel trends, especially in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, which as you noted, uh, had a dramatic impact on how people are getting around and conducting their daily activities. So while the Regional Travel Survey provides the most recent and comprehensive picture of travel in the Washington region, it reflects travel in the region before the COVID-19 pandemic. However, it does provide a baseline to compare with the post-COVID normal once we emerge out of this pandemic. So in terms of the impacts of the pandemic, I think we're likely to continue to see a rise in teleworking as many people have become accustomed to working from home during the pandemic, more employers will likely offer flexible working locations and hours. So this has implications for, for public transit, which has reduced service and lost ridership, and it will likely take some time for transit to recover uh, to pre-pandemic levels. I also think that bicycling will continue to remain robust as many folks switch to bicycling during COVID to avoid taking transit. We're also monitoring how auto travel will change as we emerge out of the pandemic. On the one hand, increased teleworking may reduce some vehicle trips, but overall driving may increase as some people may choose to live further away from work. It's honestly hard to say, but there's much research happening right now to forecast these trends, and we'll also likely conduct a future survey on regional travel patterns after the pandemic. That's great, Ken. Thank you so much for producing this foundational data that is going to be so important to decision makers everywhere across the Washington metropolitan region. A big congratulations to you. Thank you so much, Yuva. It's been a great pleasure. And thank you for the opportunity to share these findings from the survey. And thanks to everyone out there watching. Stay tuned for more from the Urban Planning Program at the Georgetown SES.